Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this desert environment inside Unreal Engine 5. I wanted to make something different because there are a lot of like desert environments on YouTube. So I took some inspiration from Star Wars. And as you can see that this environment has two sunlights. So this has two sun stars. So yeah, we are going to create this environment inside UE5. And this will be a very fun video because I'm going to explain everything. So like this is a beginner friendly video. Before I start the video, a huge shout out to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. So thank you so much for that. It really means a lot. And yeah, without further ado, let's start with the video. So we're going to start from a scratch here. So I've created an empty project right here. And the first thing that we're going to add is some lights. So whenever you're creating an environment, make sure that you have some lighting first. So we are going to go to the lights here and we're going to create a direction light here. Now this direction light has to be set to movable and you can reduce the intensity to about three or 3.5. So this looks pretty good. Now just scroll down right here and turn on atmosphere. So this will make sure that our sky atmosphere is enabled. And if you expand this right here, you can see that we have a column uh, called index. So the atmosphere sunlight index, and this is what tells the sky atmosphere system, uh, which sunlight it is. So basically you can have two suns, three suns or whatever you like. So what we are going to do is we are going to duplicate this sunlight again, and we are going to change the index to one. Now, just for viewing purposes, you can rotate this light like that. So now that we have that, let's go to lights and let's add a skylight and a skylight is basically responsible for indirect lighting. So we need that for the sky atmosphere to work, change that to movable, turn on real time capture. Now let's add the sky atmosphere system. So as you can see, the moment you added the sky atmosphere system, we have two sunlights in our scene. So we have two suns. And this is quite physically accurate. So like this is very powerful. So you can select the rotation tool and you can position these lights however you like. So I'm just going to rotate that like that. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to select both of these sunlights and we are making a desert, right? So we need to like change the color of this light. So not a full yellow color, but just a slight tint. After that, you can select the sky atmosphere and we are going to configure the sky atmosphere settings. So the sky atmosphere has a lot of different options for scattering how light is scattered. So here you need to like change these values and experiment with these values until you get something that you like. I'd recommend that you play with all of these settings and uh, like change these settings and see how it affects your atmosphere. So our sky is looking pretty good, especially for a desert landscape. So this looks pretty good. Now let's add some clouds in the scene. So under the visual effects, you can add some volumetric clouds. So our clouds are looking good, but I don't know if you can see this, like uh, Unreal is constantly like changing the brightness of a scene. And I don't like this. And by default, like this is happening because of auto exposure. So let's turn that off. So under the create panel visual effects, Let's add a post process volume here. Now in the post process volume settings, search for infinite extents and make sure that you turn that on. That will make sure that the post process volume is applied to the whole scene. After that, search for exposure, turn on minimum and maximum brightness and set these values to a value of one. So this will mean that our brightness will not change. After that, let's add some fog in the scene. So we are going to add an exponential height fog here. And to configure this fog, you can go to your project settings and make sure that support sky atmosphere affecting height fog is turned on. This will mean that the sky atmosphere and the exponential height fog will work together. So that will again increase the overall quality and the physical accuracy of your fog. So that looks pretty good. After that, we can start to configure all of these settings for the fog. So I'm going to reduce the fog density 
to about half and you can change the interscattering colors to black. So this looks pretty good. Now we'll go back in the volumetric cloud object and you can change the height of the clouds. So this lighting setup looks good. So now let's group all of these lighting elements together. After the lighting is done, let's add a landscape. So to create the landscape, you will need to go into the landscape create panel right there. And you can create landscapes in many ways. So just to save time, I have a height map. So we're going to import this from a height map. So if you don't know what a height map is, a height map is basically a black and white image. So we use height maps to store height information. So the lighter parts of the image, so the whiter parts will have a higher elevation than the black parts. So after you select the image, you can see that we have a green outline of our landscape. Just one thing that you need to change here is the Z scale. So you need to change the Z scale to 32 because it is too high. Like by default, it's set to 100. So just set that to 30 or something. And everything looks good. So let's import our landscape right here. So a landscape has been created. So Unreal has basically taken that image and applied the height data to the landscape mesh. So our landscape is looking pretty good. Now let's give it a material. So right click and add Quixel content. So I'm going to add a material from the Quixel library. And in Quixel bridge, you can search for sands. You can go to the sands collection right here. So I've already added this, just add that. After importing the material from bridge, you can select your landscape, go to the landscape material panel and just search for that material. And there we go. So you can see that our landscape has a very good material. This looks pretty good by default. Now let me show you how to configure some of the material settings. So just double click on the material to open that material. So this will open up the material instance editor. So you can turn on tiling right here. As you can see, I've turned that on and I've set the X tiling and the Y tiling to a value of 0.05. So the lower the tiling numbers are, the lower the texture repetition you will get. And make sure that the X tiling and the Y tiling are set to the same number because if you set those two different numbers, like you will get some texture stretching. You can also turn on rotation angle. So if you turn that on, you can basically rotate the texture and this will again give you some variation in the texture. Now let me show you how to create a cinematic camera animation for this. So to create that animation, you will require a camera. So go into the cinematic panel right here and add a cinematic camera actor. So this is a special type of actor used for cinematic purposes. So the moment I add the camera, I always change the lens settings. And for this particular scene, I want a wide angle shot. So for this scene, I'm going to set the minimum and the maximum focal length to 18 millimeters. You can set the diaphragm blades to 16. That will give you a higher quality bokeh effect. Down, you can set the aperture to 1.4. And that's also for the bokeh effect. So this looks pretty good. Now in this box right here, you can see what the camera is seeing. So let's go to the camera view. So first you need to snap the camera object to view. So right click and snap object to view. After that, you can go to the perspective panel right here. Turn on cinematic mode. After cinematic mode is turned on, you can select your camera actor. So make sure that you are in the cinematic viewport and the camera is active right here. So now if you move in the viewport, you are basically changing the position and the rotation of the camera. So this is looking pretty good. Now let's create an animation. So for the animation, you need to add something called as a level sequence. So just add that you need to save this level sequence. After you have saved that the level sequence is going to open up the sequencer. So the sequencer panel is where we do all the animation. First, you can change the frame rate to whatever you like. And to animate the camera, you need to add the camera into this sequence. So to do that, you can just drag your camera from the world outliner into the sequencer. So now the camera is a part of the sequence. So I want my animation to be 200 frames long. So 
So I'm going to move the red uh, slider to about 200. And you can also type the number there. So the red slider indicates the ending of animation. After that, you'll also need to expand this camera track. Now let's start animating the camera. So I'm going to go to frame zero, position the camera downwards, and just add a transform keyframe. So the transform is basically the location, rotation, and scale. After that, go to the last frame, move your camera upwards, and then add a transform keyframe. So as you can see, this has created a camera animation. You can right click on your keyframes and set those to linear as well. That will give you a constant speed. So we can play the animation from here. Now let me show you how to render this out. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the movie render queue and the movie render queue will give you a very high quality output. So for the movie render queue, you can go to cinematics right here and you will see a movie render queue panel. But if you don't see that you need to enable the plugin. So just go to the plugins panel right here. Just search for movie render queue. Make sure that these plugins are turned on. After that, you'll be able to see this movie render queue window. Now here first we need to add our sequence. So just add our sequence. Just click on the settings and this will open up our render settings. So by default, this is going to render as a JPEG sequence or we are going to delete that. And we are going to add a PNG sequence. So that will give you a higher quality output. We are going to leave the rendering to the default settings. Next, you can go to output and the output settings will define where your images are stored and you can define the frame rate and the resolution here. So you can define the resolution right here. You can define the frame rate if you want. So by default, this will take the sequence frame rate. So you can also change that if you want. Now we are going to add one more thing that will totally increase the quality of your render. And that's called anti-aliasing. So just add that. We need to add anti-aliasing here because we need access to the temporal samples. So just set the temporal samples to 32 and uh, make sure that you don't set that to a high value because like you'll have to wait and the render times are going to be long. So I'm going to set that to 32. You can override anti-aliasing right here. Turn on render warmup frames and set those to 32. So these warmup settings are going to make sure that the post processing effects and everything are settled down. So just click accept. So let's double check our settings. Everything looks pretty good. So now we are ready to render this out. So to render this, you can press the render local button and that's going to render out these images. Now, a lot of people are being asking me like how to convert those images into a video. And you can do that by using a video editor. Like you can do that by using Premiere Pro or something. It's very easy. So I'll make a short video on that if you want. But yeah, that's it. So this is how easy it is to create something like this inside Unreal Engine 5. I hope you learned something in this video. And if you did, please leave a like down below. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to see you in the next video.